Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about copy constructors. So in a previous video, we looked at the basics of constructors, which were these helpful member functions of our classes and structs for creating and initializing objects. Now, one thing that we often want to do in programming is say, uh, create a new object based on an object that already exists. And the way we can specify how this happens is through a copy constructor. So that's what we're going to look at today. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll open up the simple example here called copy constructors.cpp. And inside of here, I really just copy and pasted um, our example from when we first looked at structs. So we've defined a very simple struct here called point. So it represents say some X, Y coordinate. So we have say two data members, X and Y, uh, these two integers. And we have one member function called print that just prints out, you know, X is equal to and Y is equal to. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some minor modifications to the struct that we have defined. So for example, we can start off with just writing a constructor. So just a normal constructor here. So it'll have the same name as our structure class. And then let's write a constructor that takes in um, a couple of parameters here. So let's say it takes some integer new X and some integer new Y. So we want to initialize X and Y whenever we're creating an instance of this struct point. So then we can go ahead and initialize X and Y, say using our member initializer list. So we can initialize X with new X and we can go ahead and initialize Y with new Y, right? So now we can go ahead and create a point um, and initialize X and Y at the same time. So here, let's go down to our main function and let's go ahead and create some point P1 and we'll initialize X and Y to say 10 and 20 uh, respectively. And then let's just call p1.print. Okay, so this is all pretty simple. It's what we've looked at before when we talked about, you know, how we define structs and how we define, say, a constructor. But let's go ahead and use this as a baseline. So we'll save this. And then let's go ahead and compile copy constructors.cpp. Let's call our output executable the same thing, just copy constructors. Okay, so there's our executable. Let's go ahead and run it. And unsurprisingly, we see X is equal to 10 and Y is equal to 20. So we initialize X to 10 and Y to 20 inside of our constructor. Now let's say we want to create, say an instance um, of our struct point based on this point P1. So we don't want to say pass, you know, a new integer X and Y, right? As parameters here and run our constructor again. We just want to kind of copy P1 or create a new object based on this existing object P1. And for that, we can use a copy constructor. So let's kind of write our own to start off with. So here we'll write our own copy constructor. So just like our constructor and our destructor, it'll have the same name as our structure or class, but as a parameter, it's going to take, um, you know, something of the type, you know, point reference, right? As, as an input. So it's going to take some point by reference and let's just call that say P, right? So this is what we're trying to copy here. Some point P, we're trying to create a new point based on some existing point that we're passing in by reference here. Now, inside of the body of our copy constructor, we can do whatever we want to say, initialize our new point, right? Based on some existing one that we're passing in by reference. So for example, we can say, okay, I wanted to initialize X equal to P dot X and I want to initialize y equal to p dot y, right? So using that member axis operator to copy the value of x and y into our new point that we're creating using this copy constructor. So we're constructing a new object uh, based on say a copy here, right? So we're copying say p and you know what we want out of p to create a new object. And let's go ahead and add say a simple print in here to show that it's actually running. So we'll do std c out and then we'll do running um, our copy constructor with an exclamation point for fun. Okay, so let's go back down to our main function to actually use this copy constructor. So this time we're going to create some point P2 in this case, but we're going to base it off of some existing one, P1. So we'll just say point P2 is equal to P1, right? So I'm creating a new object P2 based, in, based on an existing object P1. Okay, and then I can just do p2.print here, right? And what I should expect to see 
is, you know, I'll first see the printout of x is equal to 10, y is equal to 20 from this p1.print. Then we're creating uh, a new object using our copy constructor here. So I should see running our copy constructor. And then I should see p2.print. So we should see that printout of x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20 again, right? We're just copying the values of x and y here um, directly, right? Not modifying them at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and recompile copy constructors.cpp and run this executable. And what we see is kind of what we expect. We see our printout from our first object that we created using just a normal constructor. Then we created that new object P2 based on our existing object P1. And we see that we get this running our copy constructor printed out followed by our call to p2.print that prints out x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20. So we created a new object based on an existing object. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back in and, and talk about a few things before we, we wrap things up. So number one was something like a copy constructor. One thing that you'll often see, so if we go ahead and look at the right hand side here on cppreference.com, is you'll see a lot of times, um, you know, with our copy constructor, the, you know, say point in this case that we're passing in by reference is qualified with this, um, this keyword const here, right? So a lot of times you'll see this as say const point uh, by reference P um, or, or whatever the type is getting passed in. And there's a specific reason for this. So in many cases, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, a copy constructor isn't modifying our original point P. So we're creating a new point based on uh, an existing one that we're passing in by reference. But I don't necessarily want my uh, new point to change my old point here. So a lot of times for safety, it'll be passed in by const reference here. So it'll be qualified with const to specify that, hey, this is read only, right? You can read and say copy, say the data members, but you can't modify this existing point here, this point P. So a lot of times you'll see this um, by const, passed in by const reference. Now, another thing here is that for trivial cases where we just say have, you know, some integers or something like this, we don't even need to specify, you know, something like a, like a copy constructor. The, you know, default copy constructor, so if we, we go ahead and look down here in these implicitly declared copy constructors and these trivial copy constructors, right, we can get away with just not defining one and rely on our um, our copy constructor that you know, we generated for us by our compiler. And we'll see, we'll get the exact same result in this case, um, you know, of the one that we define, except without that print of, you know, of running our copy constructor. So we'll go ahead and save this. So we haven't specified a copy constructor. We're just going to rely on the one that's being automatically generated by our compiler. So here, exact same code in our main function. We'll recompile copy constructors.cpp and we'll run it. And you can see we get a printout of, you know, x is equal to 10, y is equal to 20 from our first object, p1. And we created an object, p2, that also has x is equal to 10 and uh, y is equal to 20, right? So in many cases, we can rely on this, this implicit copy constructor. Okay, now one final thing I'd like to mention is that sometimes we don't want a copy constructor. So uh, just like we could say, um, you know, set... Uh, something like a constructor equal to default to make sure that our compiler still generates that. We can also set it equal to, you know, the, the special member function equal to delete. So I could do something like point, you know, const, um, you know, point by, uh, by reference P here. And then I could set this equal to delete. And what this is basically saying is that I don't want the compiler to generate a copy constructor at all. So you can see that now we get this error down here when we try to create some point uh, P2 based on P1 using this copy constructor, right? We see that it's no longer allowed. And there's times that, you know, this is exactly what we want. And I think a great example of this is with our std unique pointer, right? Our std unique pointer has exclusive ownership over some memory. So we don't want the ability to copy it. So what you'll see is that in the actual implementation for std unique pointer, it deletes uh, the move or, or it deletes the copy constructor here, right? It makes sure that um, a unique pointer cannot be copied, right? Because it has exclusive ownership. 
So there are cases where we want to, say, delete or copy constructors when we uh, don't want there to be, say, multiple versions of, say, uh, some point, right, in this case. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for today. It's kind of the basics of these copy constructors and how we can manually define them or just rely on our compiler's version. I'll link below the video, um, the CPP reference page on copy constructors. And of course, you can find uh, this and any of the other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.